problem of electronic waste or e-waste in the Philippines is very much linked to the country's garbage problem. In Metro Manila, 6,700 tons of waste is generated every day by its residents. Only 720 tons is either recycled or composted. The remaining 6,000 tons are either dumped in the city's dump sites, dumped illegally on private lands, rivers, creeks, or openly burned. Household and other industrial waste are often mixed and in the end, arrive at the same destination. E-waste are end-of-life products that are generated locally or from abroad. Foreign e-wastes come in two categories. Waste that are sent directly to Manila as waste, and waste that are mixed with regular or second-hand goods. One of the more prevalent types of electronic goods coming into the Philippines are televisions, or TVs, and other appliances from Japan and South Korea. According to a study commissioned by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, 55% of surplus TVs come from Japan, 42% from South Korea, while the remaining 2.3% comes from Taiwan, the United States, and Australia. According to the same study, completely defective items could be as high as 30% per shipment. Based on the interviews conducted by BAN, the figure is higher. It goes all the way up to 50% per shipment. Merchants refurbish the waste with parts from other broken TVs in the shipment. Parts that are unusable are sold to junk collectors or mangangalakal, who then sell it to junk shops or dump together with normal waste. The latter is often the case for CRTs. E-waste first undergoes a process of manual separation. Some use tools to disassemble the e-waste while some e-waste components are broken to retrieve usable parts. This is the fate of compact fluorescent bulbs and TV monitors. E-waste cables and plastic coatings are often burned to get the copper. After breaking, disassembling, and burning, the usable or valuable materials in e-waste are collected and sold. Interviews reveal that a majority of what is collected goes to a central collection point north of Metro Manila. It is then shipped to China by Chinese traders. These, however, are unverified at this time. E-wastes contain many toxic ingredients that can negatively affect humans and the environment. These poisons have been shown to affect biodiversity. Lead is found in TV and computer monitors. Lead attacks the nervous system, can lower IQ, cause miscarriage in women, and is a possible cancer-causing substance. Lead in CRTs can leach over time and contaminate groundwater. Mercury is found in LCD screens, button cell batteries, and CFL lamps. Mercury is another neurotoxin that adversely affects brain and motor function, especially in young children. It also lowers IQ, is persistent and bioaccumulative, and has negative impacts to wildlife as well. Polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, is found mainly in plastic computer and TV housings and in cable insulation. When burned, PVC releases harmful dioxins and purin, two of the most carcinogenic substances known to man. And the list of poisonous ingredients continue. This is the very danger of e-waste and why it should be addressed. E-waste recycling has its hazards, more so if done improperly. Interviews with other local officials confirm that wire burning and e-waste dumping is a widespread problem. Often the case, it also impacts the community that live around or near the dump site. Well, dun sa mga problema, uh, pagsapit pag ng gabi, meron dyang mga misa na nangangamoy kuryente, mga nagsusunog ng mga kuryente na ibinibenta sa junk shop. At yan ay halos araw-araw meron dito pagkagabi. Often the case, it also impacts the community that live around or near the dump site. This is Dreamland, located in Rosario, Cavite, an arse drive south of Manila. Dreamland is a community that is situated adjacent to the dump site where the town 
and the electronics industries located inside the export processing zones used to send their wastes. Uh, I started the basura in uh, year 2000. But in 1997, I started the basura here, but it's not much. Sorry, sorry, there are some people who come from wherever they come from. There are also some people who come from EFSA. In the year 2000, I started the basura here. We came here with some epidemics. Sakit, there are many people who die. 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 Gastroenteritis, hika, ubo, sipon, lagnat. Pangkaraniwan po, mga five years old, one, two, three, ganyan. Basta't mga bata po, pangkaraniwan. Hindi na po nagdadampi ito? Hindi na po. Meron kong kaming area na nalaman noon na ang sabi na, pero sa ngayon, wala na po akong pandinig na tuloy-tuloy doon. What happened in Dreamland also happened to a place called Paradise Heights, or more popularly known as Smoky Mountain. E-waste leaves in its wake a trail of harm. If you visit a dump, you'll immediately see massive quantities of plastics and other wastes. And if you dig a little deeper, the vestiges of e-waste in these dumps still remain. Philippine law recognized the dangers of e-waste as early as 1990 and prohibited the importation of toxic wastes through Republic Act 6969. However, loopholes have pockmarked this legal barrier, rendering it weak. The most recent of which is the ratification of the Japan-Philippines Economic Partnership Agreement in 2008, which allows Japan to reclassify their toxic e-waste as Japanese commodities ready for export. The e-waste crisis is a global one, as foreign wastes continue to travel to other ports in the name of free trade. Developing countries such as the Philippines are overwhelmed by local and foreign wastes. There is only so much local governments can do. Effective international intervention in the form of toxic waste trade bans are needed. Without effective international action to stem e-waste and toxic waste trade, communities such as Dreamland and Paradise Heights will only multiply. But the situation is not hopeless. There are steps we, as a society, can take to address the problem. For the government, it needs to ratify the Basel Ban Amendment prohibiting all toxic waste exports from rich countries such as Japan. Regulate the importation of second-hand electronic goods to ensure that e-waste is not imported with functioning products. Develop legislation that will prohibit toxic ingredients in products sold in our country, similar to the WEEE Directive of Europe, and ensure manufacturers are held accountable through extended producer responsibility. For manufacturers, they need to embrace green design and consider more effective recycling of their products. Lastly, for us consumers, we need to be smart about the electronic products we buy. Look for the ROHS label. This means that the product you are getting has no lead, cadmium, chromium, and other poisons. Do your research before buying. Visit websites such as those set up by Greenpeace and other environmental groups. Do not burn or dispose of your e-waste. Visit the Basel Action Network's website and find responsible e-waste recyclers in your community. You can also check the DNR website for accredited e-waste recyclers. E-waste leaves in its wake a trail of harm. If you visit a dump, you'll immediately see massive quantities of plastics and other wastes. The solutions are not easy, but the complexity of the problem should not be used as an excuse for inaction.